All right, this is uh, going to represent the Vesper model, valence shell electron pair repulsion theory. We're going to use the balloons as valence shell electron pairs. So we're going to fill these up. They're going to be, uh, I think we can go maybe a little smaller with that. They're going to be pretty big otherwise. Tie one off here. We want them to be the same size. That looks pretty good. Now when I tie this one off, I'm going to take the, uh, the knot from the second one and loop that through as well. And then I'll fasten these two to each other. And it's going to be two pairs of electrons. I'll do this again with different colors, but this is going to represent two regions around the central atom. Now, they should push away from each other as much as they can. They need, they need a little bit of help, though. So I've got a, a pre-made little plastic collar here. And I'm going to just hopefully do this without popping the balloons. There we go. And so that helps really give them the nice alignment that we want. So we'll put that off to the side here. All right, so next we've got three groups of electrons. So okay, this one I want to loop both of these two balloons through this one. So I pull that knot through and make room. Pull this knot through, make room. Pull this knot through. and make room and then get my fingers out of there. There we go. And we have trigonal planar. Push that one over here. Next we have four groups around the central atom. And now I can take these two pairs and just twist them around each other a couple of times and we've got four groups around the central atom. Now we might suspect that as a nice arrangement like this, right, where it's nice and flat, they're as far apart from each other as they can be, or so it appears, but if I just kind of give these a little nudge, they will take a more natural shape of the tetrahedron, uh, which is what we have right there. Turned up, that turned out actually rather nice. So I'll put that one back here. So uh, we're going with five groups around the central atom now. Get those all kind of situated. All right, so now I've got a group of three, a trigonal planar, and I have a linear. The combination of those two, we'll twist these around, gives us five groups around the central atom. Let's let them kind of take a more natural shape there. And there we go, trigonal bipyramidal. That shows up real nicely there, doesn't it? All right, so that's five groups. Let's put that one, uh, we'll just kind of keep that parked back here. And then six groups around the central atom is going to be our octahedral. One, two, three, yeah, I got six balloons here, so.
cinch that off. So from to make the octahedral there, I now take my three pairs and I'll wrap these two around a couple of times, then I'll get this into the mix here. Where was I? Uh, right here. Just go around a couple times there. And then this one, kind of just bump them around, let them occupy the space they need to occupy. And there we go. We have our different, uh, our different um, molecular shapes here. I mean, our different uh, electron set geometry. So we've got linear right here with two regions around the central atom. As far as hybridization goes, this represents SP hybridization. We've got three regions around the central atom, which is over here, and that is a trigonal planar geometry. That's linear, if I didn't mention. This is trigonal planar. If you're looking at hybridization, this represents three sp2 hybrid orbitals. Remember, there would be an unhybridized p orbital here that uh, sometimes comes in, you know, uh, it becomes a very relevant topic when we're talking about pi bonding. This is four groups around the central atom, which is a nice tetrahedral arrangement. This is SV3 hybridization. Uh, speaking, by the way, of uh, unhybridized atomic orbitals, if this is an SP and this is an SP, there are two unhybridized P orbitals here uh, off of this central atom. So there would be an unhybridized P orbital here and an unhybridized P orbital kind of coming back into you. I haven't done that with balloons before, but I've seen it done before. This is, uh, this is a trigonal planar. Um, trigonal bipyramidal, sorry, trigonal bipyramidal, five groups around the central atom right here. And uh, in this case, uh, hybridization, kind of an old school method of hybridization for this one would be SP3D. Um, but as, as we found out in the textbook, uh, the use of the D sublevel in hybridization is energy prohibitive. You don't get as enough, as enough energy back out of it that it takes to incorporate the D sublevel in hybridization. And then here's four groups around the central atom, I'm sorry, six groups around the central atom, which is uh, octahedral geometry. And, uh, and again, kind of an old, uh, an old method of hybridization would have included SP3D2 hybridization on this, but uh, we'll just kind of let that slide here uh, and we will focus on hybridization just for these, these right here. So there we go, a nice beautiful uh, display here of balloons. Let's bring that one back here and maybe we can get, so there's octahedral, there's trigonal bipyramidal, uh, here's tetrahedral, here's trigonal planar, and linear. And I didn't lose a single balloon in the entire blowing up process. I didn't lose a single one. So that worked out pretty well. <laughs>